So you are drinking and then you will up in <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We were sitting around, we were seniors at that point, and I just repeated that same mantra, like I can't believe there's no glass recycling in New Orleans. And we said, okay, you know, enough's enough. If the city's not gonna do it, uh, the government, let's let's at least try. And we started in a backyard and convinced all of our friends to help us um, <laughs> recycle and launch this program. And we kind of planned for a few weeks and then just put it out to the public. And the response was overwhelming. And in terms of glass and also like financial support, um, we got a lot of donations and we were able to buy our first machine, buy this trailer. Uh, we're collecting 30,000 plus pounds a week, more or less. This product doesn't belong in the landfill uh, and it can do so much good. We knew we could solve this one problem, diverting glass from our landfills. But then when we figured out after you know, weeks of research that we could actually solve a whole host of other problems, so coastal restoration. So this is a final mm -hmm. Each one actually has uh, different applications. New glass products, agriculture, disaster relief mm -hmm. and prevention. It's run by us and volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so cool because especially during the pandemic, there's been this like loss of community, you know, but there has been this sense of community here. People with just one goal of helping our planet. When you hear these people driving from Shreveport, someone coming from Baton Rouge to volunteer. We're kind of at this point where it's like, if not now, not us. This city is going to go underwater unless something drastic happens and unless we all get involved. I mean, I think there's a huge need for true recycling in America. When it's motivated by the planet and not by immense profit, uh, I think that's when you're going to get better results uh, for recycling in this country and that's, you know, what we're trying to do here.